For the past few months, you have probably seen these iceberg videos surfacing on the YouTube platform. Even after the Super Mario 64 iceberg explanation blew up a couple of months ago, which this video is going to be an inspiration from that. After seeing an abundance of these iceberg videos on any topic for the past week or two, I wanted to see one for the Trade Lance community. To my surprise, not one iceberg tier list exists for this community. So, for the past month, a close friend and I decided to create a completely original iceberg tier list solely dedicated to Trade Lance to share with the community because I feel that there is a lot of things people do not know about this game. I want to give a big thank you to Troll3274 for being my only partner in helping me writing this tier list, and Joe for spending the time to review our work, and even giving a fact check to see if everything checks out. I also want to give a big thank you to Mishkaz and Retro Gaming Now for the complete inspiration on this iceberg video. Thank you for the idea and inspiration, and I love the work on your topics. I will also be borrowing something from their videos, that is the health meter. The bar will indicate my confidence in what we are going to discuss for this iceberg tier list. If the bar is full, I am completely confident in what I am saying, and it would be deemed as fact. And as the lower it goes, the less confident I am until it hits a point where I am just making a complete shot in the dark. Lastly, I want to mention a document. This iceberg document that Troll and I created will be linked in the description below for anybody to see. We will be updating it whether we have new information to provide or if there is an adjustment to be made. Any video that I use that I did not create will also be linked in the description and the document as well. With all that in place, let's uncover the real mystery of this game and see how deep the iceberg goes. When new players first join the game, they would have the option to play the tutorial to teach you the game's bare basics. The tutorial even runs on an outdated build of the game, which is around 2015 through 2016. In the tutorial, you can explore the map outside of what the game is trying to make you do. On the map, we discovered that the Verdantium Island was still under Verdanty Power, a long forgotten faction, and the Hallingard Island is not in the physical tutorial. Of course, there is no Nassau or Harrisburg or any of the recent expanded islands, since those islands were released in 2020, while the developers made the tutorial map 4-5 to five years ago. In short, the tutorial is seriously outdated, and is probably one of the only ways to know how the game felt and ran back in the day, since it is the official build of the map. The developers know that the tutorial needs to be updated, and apparently is on their to-do list. Hopefully, one day, it will meet a modern update, but as of now, it will stay stuck in the past and on top of the iceberg tier list. Berkland is another faction in the Tradelands universe that is mainly an NPC without any playable mechanic unless they are involved in roleplay events. According to our statements, the homeland of Berkland is within the Grand Dows, but no one was able to visit the island due to the faction not being physically added to the game from certain limitations of the game. It remained like this until June 8th, 2020. When the day came around, Berkland became an official addition to the game in the form of a visible, unplayable NPC island. Berkland was mainly added because of the Freeport Games' upcoming replacement known as the Berkland Royal Games. The Brooklyn Royal Games is a reborn Olympic sport of the previous Olympic Games but on a bigger scale to expand the community events and bring more to the table that Freeport was too limited on doing. More on that later. To visit the island, you need to sail north for long enough. After that, you will receive the option to teleport to the Brooklyn Isles. Clicking yes will transfer you to a separate server using the teleportation service Roblox provides. Berkland is massively huge, taking up a quarter of the map tile that is just for the islands. It clearly shows that the developers can bring big things to the table if they work to achieve them. You aren't able to do much at the island, besides exploring the map and maybe visiting the tavern to buy food for your house. But it's still nice that the developers added one of the NPC factions into the game while it respects the endgame lore. Every year, when winter starts unfolding in the real world, the game would receive an update that replaces the current map with a winter version covered in snow, and would receive snowstorms. 
Electro steel will also be replaced with ice when mining them in night snowstorms. That would require a specific task that I will get into more later. Nothing more to say about the winter map. It's just an update that happens annually. During the lifetime of Tradelands, the game received three official events sponsored by Roblox and the product for the event that was revolving around. The three official events Tradelands received were the Atlantis event, the DuckTales event, and the Buried Treasure event. Sadly, I would not mention the events into detail since it will make this explanation too complicated, but fortunately, I will be linking sources and information relating to the events in the Iceberg document if you want to read about these archives for yourself. On rare occasions, you can hear a loud distant roar when it becomes nighttime. Most players will claim that it was the Kraken who was responsible for the sound. In mythology, the Kraken is a cephalopod-like monster that terrorizes any merchant or trader that it encounters. In Tradelands, the Kraken has a similar concept to that, more on that later. But it's the reason why you hear a roar on some nights of the game. These rare occasions are also known as Kraken Nights. The way sailships move in the game has more complexity than what it seems. In the game, wind mechanics can be split into two parts, wind tilt and wind route. Wind tilt is the system where it determines how much your ship rocks with or against the wind. Wind route is the wind direction that will calculate how fast or slow your vessels with sails will go. This system is much more complex and deserves a separate video. But that was the bare basics of the wind mechanics. All you need to know is that wind tilt rocks your ship and the entire wind route goes around the map in a clockwise circle. Tradelands is no stranger to hidden commands. Under the hood is an arsenal of powers that you can execute to improve your quality of life. These secrets vary from simple features to other graphical changes. Again, I will not be talking about these commands in detail since there is a long list of current and removed commands in the game's lifespan. You can find the iceberg document in the description below for you to check out the listings in further detail. Electro steel and ice are the only two unique materials that you can get through normal gameplay. Gaining both materials requires a specific and lengthy process that needs to be executed correctly. I personally made two separate guides on these two materials that explains how you can get in in the first place, with some other pieces of information. The guides are pretty outdated, but they still hit the nail on the coffin on how the process works, and how you can get one for yourself. If you want to learn, you can watch these two videos after watching this one, linked in the description below. Many players have seen off-looking weapons, especially when they are new to the game and cannot find them anywhere in the typical crafting workplace. The following list consists mainly of mystery crates and official navy weapons. Inside these mystery crates, you can unbox the special weapons that you cannot craft anywhere else in the game. The following weapons that you can unbox are the mini crossbow, heavy crossbow, blunder blaster, scimitar, glow saber, Chris, Katana, Sledgehammer, and the Scythe. The navy weapons are weapons that can only be obtained through their specific official faction navies. The following navy weapons are the Balreskin Longsword, Warhammer, Howlingard Battle Axe, Howlingard Dagger, Halberd, and the Cutlass. Sadly, I will not go into further detail for the sake of saving time in this video, but as always, you can find everything you need to know about these weapons in the Iceberg document linked below. During the winter of 2018 through 2019, Tradelands received one of its first and only infamous disease outbreaks through the entire Grand Isles, known as the Northern Cough. 
the northern cough was a in-game disease that caused symptoms from consistent coughing, blurred vision, screen shake, to immediate and random death with a text saying, ugh, you don't feel so good, every time you join the game or respawn. The origins of the disease is unknown, but it was rumored that the cause and spread of the disease is by being in cold conditions and being in groups of people. The northern cough was so severe that the King of Whitecrest and the Chancellor of Nova Baresca at the time released roleplay documents stating about the disease and ways to protect yourselves. Of course, the statements are not real ways to stop the disease, and it was more of a roleplaying slash meme document. In real honesty, there was no way to prevent the disease in the game. Every new player is going to get it until they develop an immunity to it whether they like it or not. There are rumors that drinking lime juice and staying near warm areas such as torches does reduce your coughing rate and the chance of getting the disease. But these are just simply unconfirmed rumors and you should take these treatments with a grain of salt. At best, you can simply wait it out and the disease would naturally go away which usually lasts a couple of days to potentially a week or two. Once you have fought the disease and you are no longer ill, you will be instantly immune to it and you will never get sick from it again. There is also ways to diagnose people with the disease. Using a dagger made up of grime wood and composition L and then swinging it on a player will tell you about their health status based on the blood color they drop, which has three levels, red, orange, and green blood. Red blood represents that you are not sick, but it also means that you have no immunity from the disease. The states of the orange blood can either be you are currently sick or you develop the immunity after the sickness. And green blood is a special type of blood that means you have a true natural immunity, meaning that you never got sick from the disease and you never will. You were naturally born immune. Fun fact on that, Nar has green blood, which means that he will never and can never get sick to the disease in the first place. During this time, many groups were trying to find ways to prevent the spread of the disease, have treatment, and even cure it. The Whitecrest Navy Task Force of Disease Researchers, the Noah Baraska Science Team, and Guterpop V5 being a personal doctor for Hallingard Navy were some of the prime examples during those times. Recently, however, the Northern Cough has been removed from the game in the early year of 2020. According to Joe, he stated the following. Northern Cough was removed from the game earlier this year for obvious reasons. The reason on why the Northern Cough was removed is unknown, and we currently cannot confirm on any sort of speculation. If you head out to the backside of Blackwing Cove and you go into one of the giant rocks at the very top, there is a piece of the floor that doesn't have a collision script, meaning that you will fall right through. Inside of the hidden room of the rock, you will encounter the two small blue alien-like merchants on the other side under a sizable Brooklyn flag, Breck Breckerson and Breck Breckberg. Breck Breckerson sells only two things, Blue Heart Tack and the Mark of Nar, which can only be purchased at random times of the year, meaning that they will randomly go on sale. Blue Heart Tack is used to spawn the Kraken, more on that later, and the Mark of Nar is a material that is necessary to create the combat log ship. Both of these materials only cost Robux, with Blue Heart Tack giving you 10 for 100 Robux and the Mark of Nar gives you one for 200 Robux. Breck Breckberg is a little unique. The only way to open up his shop UI is by having a particular item in your inventory called a Brecky Wealth Token, which you can buy from another player that already has one. Breck Breckberg sells a lot more items but uses the balloons as payments instead. The merchant sells the alien-like hat that they are wearing, a fidget spinner, a plushie of the Breck Merchants, a light blue glowing material that is known as Breconium, and an empty barrel that is used to make the Titan ship. 
Of course, he also sells the Break You Both token, which we already mentioned earlier. The funniest part is that people say that one cannot mention about the aliens and their current location. But here I am telling you all this. We mentioned earlier about the Kraken Night Roar, the distant scream during rare nights. So now it is time to talk about the Kraken itself. In the game, you can spawn the Kraken through a complete process of materials, players, and a lot of preparation, which deserves its completely separate video. But for the sake of this iceberg video, all you need to know is that you can spawn the Kraken legitly and fight this giant like Mr. Tentacles Roblox cosmetic that shoots lasers out of his eyes through a complete process. The Kraken is mentioned as an easter egg because it isn't shown to the public but rather as small hints and gameplay that the average player would overlook. Overall, it's an excellent little addition to the game and the iceberg tier list. Okay, wow, um, this video took way longer than I expected. I know this was supposed to release somewhere around December 23rd, but uh, I kind of underestimate how long the video would be. Seriously, the recorded audio for the layers together is two hours long, so it is clear that I have to split this into a multi-part series. Now, I know that it's very underwhelming, but it's more stressful to me that I have to put all of this together in one go, and it would take too long to have this done. So, I thought splitting the layers into multiple parts is the best bet. I already started working on the other layers on the bright side, so it shouldn't take too long to get the next part up and running. <laughs> Am I right? But that's pretty much all for me. I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you want to see more, be sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel since it would help me a lot and it would signify that you want to see more of this stuff. Alright, I think that covers everything. Thanks for watching, I hope you all had a great New Year's Eve, and let's see what 2021 has in store for us. Take care, and I'll see you in the battle.